thank you for coming. Thank you for people that come every single month and new timers. Um, this is one of our favorite events that we hold each month because it's free to everybody and it's our way to support you as you transition or are currently living plant-based lifestyle. I want to recognize our PBNSG team, Paul Chatlin. He's the founder of PBNSG in the face of an amazing story of going from nearly dying to strong to vibrant and healthy through a plant-based diet. I also want to recognize Marion Trees and Brett Nyquist, and then myself, I am the director of support groups. Um, as Ch Paul Chatlin likes to say, we're together as one, and we have the same passion towards helping others find success in the plant-based lifestyle. And I call it a plant-based lifestyle because it is a lifestyle, not a diet, in my opinion. So I choose to use that word instead. Uh, my name is Megan Burt, and I am the mother of a six-year-old who's plant-based whole foods since the beginning. So as I was sharing with Lauren earlier, he never gets sick. He has endless amounts of energy, and I completely credit it to his diet. Uh, food is fuel. We're supposed to eat plants, and um, it keeps us healthy and strong and vibrant and um, helps us avoid all those terrible diseases that we should not be getting. For those that are new to PBNSG, uh, PBNSG stands for Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. And we are a nonprofit organization dedicated to evidence-based education and advocacy of plant-based whole foods nutrition to help individuals prevent or reverse chronic disease and achieve optimal health. As attendees know, PBNSG is well into our new membership platform, which gives access to live virtual events, cooking demos, support group meetings, and more. We have 10 different specialized support groups right now. Lauren Burnick, who is the specialized host for our heart disease group. We also have a weight loss group meditation group, uh, diabetes, the list goes on and on. And uh, members have access to each of those meetings each month, um, including the recordings and everything else that we have to offer. And now we also are offering coaching for those that need the individualized support, the extra support, because um, as we all know, sometimes living a different lifestyle can be have its challenges. Um, so I also want to direct you to our Facebook page, our Instagram and our Twitter. You can find recipes, um, updates on events that we're holding and um, anything else that we wanna share. So um, I wanna get right to our presentation, our host, uh, Lauren Burnick. Well, I'm the host, I'm the, I meant our speaker. Uh, Lauren Burnick, she's gonna present on eating plant-based on the go, uh, which I think is something we all need tricks on. She, um, she eating plant-based at a restaurant, an event, a friend's house or traveling can present challenges as we all know, but Lauren has the, tricks to help us be successful um, from well elephant elephant her i'm going to type in her website and instagram and facebook all later on once you start talking lauren um, lauren became an inadvertent health advocate when she was diagnosed with coronary artery disease in 2015 she was able to reverse her heart disease evidenced by extensive testing and lose 20 pounds without medication by following a low-fat whole foods plant-based diet without oil she now helps others do the same. She offers a class called ACE Plant-Based Eating. ACE stands for amend the recipe, cook without oil and eat on the go. That's all you have to know to be a plant-based pro. Uh, find out more on her website again, which I'll type in here, wellelephant.com. Um, Lauren has amended many of her old favorite recipes that she used to reverse her heart disease and compiled a cookbook, Cook Your Way to Health with Well Elephant. You can also go to her website and download a free three-day meal plan and grocery list which can be added to your email list as well. Um, again, I'll type all this information in the chat box so you have it later and you also receive the recording for this uh, event tonight. Lauren, thank you for being here. I'm always excited to hear you talk. Um, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you. Actually, I changed my freebie on my website so it's not the three-day meal plan anymore. I need to update my bio. I'm actually giving away that cookbook now. So if you go to wellelephant.com, you can download my cookbook for free. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, it has, yeah, it has a lot of good like recipes, salad and dressings. Just, and and yeah. I just put your uh, website in the chat box for those that want to join. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, hello, everybody. Uh, it's nice to be on this side. Like Megan was saying, I, I host the heart disease group and I host a lot of the meetings. So it's nice to be the guest on this side. Um, okay, let me see. We are gonna talk about eating plant-based on the go. So I know that that just can make you freak out to just know that you're leaving the house, you're gonna have trouble sticking to your plan, you know, maybe that's going through your mind. Um, 
But Megan and I were just talking about it. And I've been doing this for seven and a half years now. And just the longer you do this and the more practice you have at leaving the house and going out to eat or traveling, just the easier it is. Um, I used to just really pack everything but the kitchen sink when I'd go on vacation. And I really don't even do that anymore. I've become so adept at this. So let me get, I'm going to do a little PowerPoint. Um, dang it. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to share my, I can share the screen, right? Yep. Yep. It's enabled. Okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like we were just saying, technology is great until it is not. Okay, so uh, eating plant-based on the go and feel free to interrupt with questions as I'm going along, just either speak up or uh, Megan can <clears throat> see you if you raise your little hand. Um, so the types of eating away from home. So there's eating out when you've planned it ahead of time um, and you're able to call the restaurant, kind of make a little plan. There's eating out on the fly, like you're just out, you're shopping, all of a sudden you get starving or your friend says, come meet me. There's going to someone's house. Um, there is going to a party, event, a meeting, traveling by car, traveling by plane. And that's it. Oh, and vacation. Sorry. And, uh, Keith wants to know where um, where did the name Will Elephant come from? Oh, thanks for asking that. Um, I named it Will Elephant because elephants are strong, beautiful herbivores supported by their community, and you are too. So that's why I named it that. I like that um, name. Thank you. Okay. So I'm trying to just arrange my screen because I'm having trouble seeing the last Part of my slide. Okay, so restaurants. <clears throat> There's a few ways to like figure out where you're going to eat. Um, has anybody ever used plant pure communities? I can't see. This is a problem. Let me see. I want to be able to see some people. Um, plant pure communities is good, but it's not fail safe. Like I've gone, they have like this restaurant listing. I'll show you in a second. Um, well, I'll talk about it in a second. There's happycow.net and there's opentable.com. Those are like some really good places to start finding a restaurant. <clears throat> okay, so Plant Pure Communities, like I was saying, it's good. They have this restaurant campaign and you can find a restaurant with a certificate. So having a certificate means that um, they have something on the menu that's gonna be whole food, plant-based without oil. I have learned that you need to, and it's kind of arranged by states. You can find like if you're traveling to, I've used it when I've gone to Las Vegas or New York, um, but I have found just because it's on the website doesn't mean that whoever's in the restaurant now in the kitchen or whoever, does, they might not know that this is a thing anymore. So <clears throat> always call the restaurant before you go if you find them on this website. It can be awesome, it can be a really good resource. Um, happycow.net, you've probably all heard of this. So you can type in where you're going, you can filter it by like vegan, vegetarian, vegan friendly. And that way, if you're going with other people and maybe if they don't eat the way you eat, you know, same thing. You have also probably discovered this already that just because some place is vegan, does not mean in the least that you're gonna be able to eat there. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I have found that vegan restaurants are the ones that use the most oil. So just use it as a starting off point um, and go from there. Again, call them. We'll, we're gonna go over how to call the restaurant. Opentable.com, you can click this little um, vegan vegetarian filter and then you'll have access to um, the restaurant's menu. And that's the best thing to do. Basically, you want to find your way to a restaurant that has something vegan on the menu that you might be able to amend. So you're going to end up ultimately calling the restaurant. So this is how you call a restaurant. You want to call when it's not busy. 
kind of try to call between, like if they're open for lunch, call between 10 or 11. Somebody will be in there already and they won't be busy yet. Or call between two and five if you're going for dinner. So what you wanna do is ask to speak to the chef or manager and explain your situation. Maybe that you have a health condition, that um, you know you can't eat oil, you can say you're allergic to oil. I don't do that. I just say I can't eat oil for a health reason and ask pleasantly for a vegan meal. You don't really have to explain these days so much anymore, but you want to make sure they understand it's vegan so um, that you can't eat any oil, but also that means please don't cook it in butter. So vegan, no butter, no eggs, no animal products whatsoever, and no oil. And then know their menu and suggest modifications. <clears throat> One thing I didn't put on this, I might've put it somewhere else, but like if I found a restaurant on opentable.com, I will make a reservation before I call the restaurant. It just gives them a little more at stake. So instead of losing a reservation for two to four people or whatever, whoever's coming in, they'll be more willing to accommodate you because you already have a reservation, you're serious about coming in. And then of course, if they're going to accommodate you, keep, keep the reservation and, and be a good patron. Um, so this is a little, this is something I found uh, when I was going to Houston. This is an actual menu from the Grove. And I found this cauliflower kashari. Um, it's vegan. It has things I have no idea what are in there. It has chickpeas, lentils, potatoes, JC, I don't know what that is, rice, uh, chili tomato sauce, and, and duca. I don't know what that is. But anyway, I called them up. When they were not busy, I asked to speak to the chef or the manager. Um, and I said, you know, this is Lauren. I'm coming in tonight. I have a reservation for four people at seven o'clock. Um, I'm vegan and I also cannot eat any oil for health reasons. So vegan, I can't have any, you know, butter, eggs. And I noticed on your menu that you have this beautiful looking cauliflower dish. Is there any way you could possibly make that for me without oil? And, you know, if they can, they will. Sometimes there's things that are already marinated in it. Let's say they said, um, well, the, ch the chili tomato sauce is already cooked. It's already done and it has oil in it. Fine, can you leave that off of the, the dish? I'll, I will love it, I'll eat it, you know, just reassure them. A lot of times the fear comes from, they think you're not gonna like it. Just explain, you eat this way all the time, you're used to eating without oil, you're used to eating things, you know, this way, and you will love it. And I wanna tell you, if they can accommodate you, they will. So that's when you know you're going to a restaurant. This is walking into a restaurant cold. When you get there, you know, just look at their menu, see if there's something that can be amended, kind of like we, what we just did, and ask questions. Um, explain to the server, but be specific. Again, explain that you can't have butter because that's happened to me once and only once. And then I made sure that, you know, I explained I'm vegan. So that means no butter and no oil. Um, and then the worst case scenario, you have your own oil-free dressing in your leak proof container. This is something, if you don't have a leak proof container, you want to invest in one. It has um, a little rubber thing here. So it keeps it from spilling into your purse or your little bag that you're gonna bring in. I have them in all different sizes. This is if I need extra dressing. I don't know. This has a it's bigger, but again, it has a little rubber thing in here. So if you know you're gonna be out for the day and you might end up at a restaurant, excuse me, have a little cooler bag in your car um, or with you and make sure you have your dressing with you so that if you end up someplace and you can't get anything that you want to eat, you'll at least have a good salad dressing. Because as I say, if I end up with lettuce and lemon, I am cranky. I do not want that. Um, you know, if you eat avocado, that's a good thing to have in your salad. You could even do avocado with a squeeze of lime. That's delicious. Make a nice salad dressing out of that. Okay. 
Um, if you go to a Mexican restaurant, as I said, I live in Austin. So uh, I end up at a Mexican restaurant half the time I go out to eat. So I always want to make sure I know some places. I've found some places now that are vegan or they have vegan beans that are oil-free. Um, you can bring your um, baked corn tortilla chips. So these are just organic corn tortillas that you bake in the oven. And all you do is put your oven on 375. I just toss these on the rack. I don't even do them fancy. If I'm gonna have people over or I'm going somewhere and I want it to look a little nice, then I get a pizza cutter and I slice it into little triangles. You can squeeze it with a little lime. You can put some chili powder or, you know, spices on there, make it kind of festive. Um, but just cook, you know, cook your corn tortillas in the oven for at 375 for about 10 minutes. It really depends um, on the thickness of your tortilla, how fast your oven cooks. So play around. But make sure you have those with you. If I'm out on a weekend, I promise you there are there are some baked corn tortilla chips in my purse or in my car because I know we'll probably end up at a Mexican restaurant. <clears throat> so you can, sorry, you can go um, to the Mexican restaurant. You can order some black beans. Um, you can request lettuce, pico de gallo, salsa, make your own little taco salad. And of course, you know, the key is that you never want to feel left out. You don't want to feel like, oh, everybody's eating and I'm not eating. I'm just sitting here. And so especially at the Mexican restaurant, that's why I like to have my chips, because in Texas, they come and they put a basket of chips on your table and a thing of salsa as soon as you walk in. And I want to be able to start eating just like everybody else. Um, if you're going to somebody's house, you want to explain your diet. This is what I always say. Look, I have a lot of dietary restrictions and I'll just bring my own food. Um, if you have a good friend like my friend Debbie, who's on here, she's more like my sister. She eats this way now, but she used to not. And she would always make me something. Um, so you can suggest things or you could just have a really good friend who buys like a vegan oil free cookbook so she can cook for you. Um, and just suggest easy things if they do want to cook for you. So, you know, based on, depends what they're making. You don't want them to make you a whole separate meal, but you know, you could say, look, if you're going to be making a salad, I'll bring my own salad dressing. You can just make me a baked potato, something like that. Um, I honestly <clears throat> like to bring my own food when I'm going to somebody's house, because again, I want to eat close to what they're eating. So I just ask them to tell me what they're gonna make and then I make something similar. Um, I just feel like it's the easiest way to not feel left out. But again, if they wanna make you something, you know, kind of try to give them some guidance and try to make it as easy as you can on them. Okay, so if you're going to a party or an event, this has happened like when I'm going to um, a trade show for work or uh, a wedding, you want to RSVP for the event and request a special meal. Now, this is how you want to handle this. Um, especially, let's just say you're going to a wedding. You do not want to put one more thing on the bride or the groom. Again, you want to be a gracious guest. You don't want to be known as the person who has all these dietary restrictions and is a big pain in the butt. You want to really handle things for yourself. Um, so what I always say to the bride or the groom, whoever's my friend or a relative, look, by this time, everybody knows how I eat, but let's just say, I have a lot of dietary restrictions. Can you please give me the name of the caterer or you know, your party planner or who? I'd rather even not talk to the party planner. Really, I'd like to go to the source and talk to who's ever gonna be cooking my meal and just say, let me handle this. So let me take it off your plate. I know you have enough to do. And then I call that person and I explain. And I wanna tell you, I have never been turned down for any kind of wedding or event. I just explained very nicely. I mean, yeah, there's been times I got some crappy steamed vegetables and you know, a potato. And that was fine. You can always like ask for some sriracha or some tamari, doctor it up, or, you know, you can mix up some 
mustard and balsamic, ask for that, doctor it up. But I want to tell you, most of the time I get a phenomenal meal, like really phenomenal. Um, the key is to get that person's name that you talk to, uh, follow up maybe a couple of days in advance, and then also ask when I am at the wedding, um, how will I find, how will the person with my special meal find me or how will I find the person who has my special meal? That's really important. Um, and, you know, if there's, if it's just like a party where it's not like a catered event, like you're just going to, say you're going to your friend's house for New Year's Eve. Again, find out what they're going to serve and bring something similar. Um, know what's going to trigger you. I find that most people are either going to be triggered by the desserts or by the dips, the appetizers. But, but what, what are you going to freak out about when everybody else is eating that and bring your own? I don't care if you have to pull a cake out of your purse, not a whole cake. You're going to pull a piece of cake out of your purse, but you want to have with you whatever you're going to be watching everybody else eat that you're going to be like, I want to eat that. Make sure you have your own. Does it stink that you have to make a lot of plans in advance? Yeah, but you know what? You're worth it. This is how you reverse disease by being consistent and kind of sticking with it. Um, and if you go to a wedding and you're like, oh, it's my friend's wedding. I'm just going to have a slice of wedding cake. You know what? You can do that. That's an option. Nobody's judging you, but it does make it harder on you. It's once you let your palate change and you really give over to doing this and you, this is what you do for yourself and your health, it makes it so much easier. Um, because if you just say, oh, I'm just going to allow this, I'm just going to allow that, your palate's not changing. You're, you're going to have that taste for buttercream frosting. You're still going to want that or whatever it is. For me, it's dip. I don't care about the cake as much as I care about what they're serving before. Like you, you could pull me away from like the dip in the cheese before I um, went whole food plant-based. That was what I, I pull my chair up to the buffet. I don't care. That was what I wanted. Um, so now I make sure I have something similar. I'll bring a dip or, you know, whatever I have to do to make myself feel like I am participating. Um, and you might be able to eat some of their fruits and veggies if you bring your dip or your hummus or whatever, but you know, don't, don't count on anything. Okay. Do we have any questions yet or? You know, just some comments about things you've been saying about dips and Sid daughter, well, another one of our specialized hosts shared that yeah, some of the Sid. best vegan oil free meals she's had were at wedding banquet banquets. Um, we do have a question from Remy. Did she, she was wondering, was it mentioned if guacamole was an issue? I think it's mainly just the calories, correct? The uh, well, you know, it just depends. Like if you're doing Dr. Esselstyn's diet for reversing heart disease, he discourages avocado. Um, I have reversed my heart disease. It's been seven and a half years. I really went very full, almost full Esselstyn. I definitely had some nut and seed sauces on occasion, but I really tried to keep it low fat. I did not eat avocado unless I was in, there was a couple times I was in Europe and the only thing I could eat was some avocado toast. Um, I did that. So I saved it for a really special occasion. Since reversing my heart disease, and I do have extensive testing um, showing that I really have, I'm, I've really kind of changed my stance. I've loosened up because I feel like I'm in the maintenance phase of life now, and I'm looser with my nut and seed dressings. I eat them more often. I would probably eat guacamole if I went to, um, a party. Some people do put mayonnaise in their guacamole. It's few and far between, but you do want to check on that. So just kind of still make sure about that. Um, anything else? So, okay, let's say you're traveling by car now. Okay, this is what I did a, even up to a couple of years ago, but I've really kind of loosened up on what I bring now. But I used to bring, you know, a giant cooler with fruit, rice and beans, pre-made burritos, sandwiches, veggies and hummus, my tortilla chips and salsa, <clears throat> brown rice crackers and roasted vegetables, and of course, my no oil dressing. 
I am traveling lighter these days because I'm more comfortable. Now it depends where I'm going. We went out to, um, oh my gosh, what is it? Like Terlingua, Texas. We went to Big Ben and it's in the middle of nowhere. And I was a little worried that I wasn't going to be able to eat. So I packed my cooler and I ate, you know, made sure I had what to eat. But even there, honestly, I was able to eat pretty well just by calling the restaurants, um, having my salad dressing. And another thing that I ate there and I'll eat sometimes, um, it's not a exactly whole food plant-based because I'll eat like a pizza sometimes if it's, which is white flour. It's again, not something you want to do, but if you're traveling by car or you're kind of stuck, you can call and make sure they don't oil up the crust, make sure the crust is vegan, and then just get a tiny bit of marinara. You know, there have been times like I'll make an exception for this. It might have a little oil in it. Um, but if I've been traveling by car and, you know, I'm starving and this is the situation, this, this is why you eat 100% all the time so that once in a huge while, if you're in a bind, you could do something like this. Get a pizza that doesn't have oil on the crust um, and just put raw veggies on top, have them bake it um, in the oven. Be sure and tell them don't drizzle it with olive oil because they might try to make it fancy for you if you get it without cheese. Of course, no cheese. And then that way you can have that in the car. You can eat it for several meals. It goes a long way. So again, that's not ideal, but like I said, you're going to just do so well when you're at home that that might be an exception. Uh, traveling by plane, if it's a short flight, eat a good meal before you go. Bring a snack on the plane. If it's a long flight, eat a good meal before you go and bring lots of food, sandwiches, fruit, tacos, all kinds of things. Um, and beware of hummus. I've had my hummus confiscated. They said it was a, I don't know, it's not a liquid, but I guess it is technically a paste, but most of the time I travel fine with my hummus, but I almost cried when they tried to take that from me. Um, and then vacation destinations, call ahead and request a mini fridge for your room. Marriott hotels always have mini fridges in their rooms. Um, what I do is I just call and I just ask if I can get a fridge in my room, if it's not a place that normally has one. And a lot of times they'll just let, say yes and we'll give you one. Sometimes they say, oh, we charge $30 a day. And then in that case, I'll hang up, I'll call back like the next day and say, I have a medical issue and I need, you know, a fridge in my room and they'll give you one for free. I don't like to lie, but I'm going to do that. If, it, it is a medical situation. You are eating this way for your health. So um, get a fridge in your room and bring your insulated food bag, like a little, I'll show you one in the next slide, but you know, like a, like a lunch bag that you would have. Um, pack it with cold packs. You'll check your luggage. And in that you're going to bring your, you don't have to have your plant milk refrigerated when you go. Um, but you'll want to bring that. You'll want to bring some hummus or some things that might be need to be refrigerated. Um, bring your rice crackers, veggies, your salad dressing. That'll be need to be refrigerated and your chips and salsa. This is my bag of tricks. You can tell this is an old slide because it has the old engine two hummus, which I miss dearly. Um, but that's my insulated food bag. I bring my oat milk with me. I bring um, cereal. So I always bring like a big container. I must not have been going away for very long because that doesn't look like a big thing of cereal. But I always bring a giant thing of cereal with me. And then I bring this as my bowl. I bring a spoon, I bring this as my spoon, my bowl. And so I'll measure out the cereal and put it in here with my oat milk and either eat that in the morning or if I haven't had enough to eat, like I ended up with a salad and I come back to my room and I'm still really hungry, I'll have a bowl of cereal with some uh, fruit. And then, you know, my veggies and my hummus and all that good stuff. That's just another picture of it. And that's really the crux of it. I went through it kind of quickly. And everybody who's here, 
Um, PBNSG has a YouTube channel and you can access this recording later. And that was this, the last page of her slide showed all her website, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Plus I did type it into the chat box. Um, but that's great, Lauren, because now we have time for any Q&A versus just questions in the chat box. And that's yeah. a big part of our whole community support group event. By the way, before I forget, for those that are new, we do hold this free community support group event the second Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern, and you register the same way you did tonight. I think I forgot to mention that in the beginning, so I just want to say that now before we open up the floor for questions and answers. Um, anyone want to just blurt out with some questions um, or type in some questions I can read out for you? Um, I do a lot of the same things that Lauren does when I travel, um, and the, the more often you do it, the easier it becomes. You kind of have your set go-to things that you know to pack, and it becomes pretty brainless, to be honest. Um, so I do that whether I'm going on a plane or whether I'm doing a road trip. I have this like little kid's suitcase that I actually have. It's now it's like now my food suitcase. Oh, um, wow. Well, yeah, because it was my son's suitcase. You know how they yeah. little kids cute. Now it's literally my designated food suitcase. Yeah. What you have to check if it has like plain yeah. Milk. When you check, yeah, because I bring like canned beans. You know, um, mm -hmm. they have like mashed beans. I could bring those right. a lot. Um, things like that or the milk. Um, okay, so anyone have any questions for Lauren? Yes, I have a question. Okay, go for it. Um, yes, uh, what about seeds and nuts, like um, pistachio, walnuts, um, and almonds? I yeah. didn't, you know, for snacks, I didn't hear it say anything concerning you know, those. Yes, because I really have not been a big nut eater, again, because I've been doing Dr. Esselstyn's Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Protocol. <laughs> And he's not a big proponent of people eating nuts and avocado, um, things like that, because they're very high in fat for reducing um, heart disease. I tend to agree that you have to, I don't like nuts as a snack, just because I like to use my nuts to make a salad dressing if I'm going to use it. And I typically do walnuts or I do pumpkin seeds. I try to keep it, you know, those kind of things. I try to use cashews sparingly, like maybe if I'm doing, um, um, going to make a cashew cheese for um, like a lasagna. I try to be sparing with those. If you don't have heart disease and you want to bring some nuts, that's fine. But you mentioned seasoned. So I want you to be careful and make sure that they're not, you know, roasted with oil because that happens sometimes, especially with peanuts. Um, so make sure that they're just raw nuts if that's something you want to do and then you know do them sparingly like a little handful you can get really carried away with nuts and it keeps you from losing weight if you need to you might not need to lose any weight I can't see you um and yes I do no well I didn't mean to <laughs> put you on the spot um I'm sorry but you know if it's no word your health then you know it's something you want to be careful with just be a little judicious with it Thank you. Thank you. And you're and then, gorgeous. Uh, Look at you. Thank you. <laughs> and then the recommendations for um, plant milks, we have Remy suggested hemp milk. I think hemp milk is fantastic. Um, I do the unorganic, I mean, not the unorganic, the organic unsweetened soy milk, as long as it's organic and unsweetened. Yeah. Because uh, Jeannie has, uh, can't do almond milk and can't do oat milk. So that's why Yeah. I think unsweetened organic soy, make sure it's organic. Soy is highly sprayed. Yeah. And then um, I like the hemp milk too. Um, that was one of the questions. Uh, what type of cereals do you enjoy, Lauren? Oh, I do like a mixture. I, like I said, I get a big container and I mix together several cereals. I do just raw oats and then I do puffed Kamut. And then I put in, sometimes I do like Ezekiel. I just mix it all together. I put a lot of cinnamon in there. Um, and that way when I, you know, put it in my little pack it down to my little bowl. Um, it's all kind of mixed together and yummy and I get fruit, put it in there. But let, let's say that you're going down to like the hotel lobby. They're generally going to have vegan oatmeal that you can eat, but let's say they don't. Let's say you end up at some kind of like hotel that has like a breakfast bar and um, you're going down with your friends to eat. You can pack down your cereal. That's why I always bring the lid, even though I'm going to use this for my bowl. Um, and that's how I handle that. And I bring my plant milk. But even that's everywhere now. 
Yeah, they usually, if anything, have even though instant oats aren't the best, they at least have yeah. that. Um, I always ask if it's been cooked in milk versus water, but it's usually water because it saves them yeah. money anyways. Yeah. Um, I agree with Ezekiel. I like the Ezekiel a lot. It's good. Um, I like the Ezekiel uh, English muffins. I don't think they call them English muffins, but they look like English muffins. Yeah. As Those long as they're good. microwaved, otherwise they're too hard. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like them squishy. <laughs> I mean, we'll put mine in the toaster, but I guess I could try it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good that way. Um, Sid said, do you ever pack sandwiches? If so, what type? Uh, chickpea salad, perhaps? Yeah, I do. If I am doing chickpea salad, Sid, I do it in a Ezekiel pita because, it, you know, it falls out of that Ezekiel bread. Mm -hmm. Um I do pack that. I do mostly I'm good. I do like a hummus sandwich if I'm going to do that. Um, and I just do like a lot of hummus and then I do, um, all kinds of veggies. I like cucumbers and peppers on there. I like the, um, oh, what do you call those? Like pepperoncinis on there. And then mm -hmm. I do all kinds of spices on there. Also like oregano and pepper. Yeah. Yeah. I like the Probably. avocado hummus sandwiches, but yeah. I do avocado. Avocado would be a good one. If you're eating avocado, that would definitely be the time to, to yeah. whip it out. Um, you know, I eat other kinds of sandwiches when I'm at home, like we were saying, but for traveling, you don't want to bite into it and then everything falls out. So I try to keep it, you know, probably avocado or hummus would be best. Yeah. Are there any other, oh, what, uh, what protein sources do you go to when you're traveling? Um, have you been doing this? For a while, who is asking that? Uh, Tom? Tom is asking what protein sources do you go to when traveling? Okay. So Tom, I don't know how long you've been eating this way, but um, it's hard not to get enough protein. And I just typically don't worry about that because I know I'm going to get protein. You know, if I'm eating hummus, if I'm eating my oats, um, I try to eat beans when I'm out but you're getting tons of protein. There's protein in lettuce. There's protein in everything. I feel like that's something that we've been, you know, told because people want to slap contains protein on the outside of something and sell it to us. So I, it's not something I particularly worry about. Um, as I always say, you probably don't know anybody who's been rushed to the hospital with protein deficiency, but I'm sure you know people who have had cancer or heart disease, and those are diseases that come from eating too much, pro particularly animal protein, but um, even like breast milk is five to 6% protein, and that was made specifically to make us grow into bigger humans. So it's not something I really concern myself with. I do usually have my nut or seed sauce salad dressing. So that has protein. And like I said, the hummus and the oats and the beans. So I feel like I'm, I'm good on that. Um, okay. And Robert asked, do you worry about the oil and hummus or um, is there a brand that you know that doesn't have any, or do you just make it from scratch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I make it from scratch or um, Cedars. Like I said, it used to be the engine too, and that was fabulous, but they don't make that anymore. Cedars hummus doesn't have oil. I get that at Whole Foods, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly I'm, you know, I try to make it from scratch. Yeah. Oh, and I just found um, since I've loosened up a little on my nuts and seeds, there's a new brand at uh, Whole Foods called Cava, C A V A. It has tahini in it but it doesn't have oil and that's really good. So if you could find that at Whole Foods, that's a good one. And if you're eating tahini, then that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see, did I miss any other questions? I think we've gotten all the questions. Uh, what are your thoughts about using wheat gluten to make things like bologna? 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 I don't, bologna. I don't know. I don't know that uh, word, bologna. I think bologna is spelled like bologna. That's what I thought. So that's yeah. why I think bologna. It's, I know. We probably just never see that anymore. Um, I, you know what? I haven't done that. I would kind of be open to it depending on the recipe. Um, I have used, are you, I guess you're talking about vital wheat gluten to make something. Sid, do you uh, want to um, unmute yourself and ask? Hi, Laura. Hi, Sid. Yeah, so there's a lot of vital wheat gluten recipes for ham and sausage and um, uh, 
like Shane and Simple has a ham recipe that we yeah. discovered is really good with mustard. But again, it's using vital wheat gluten. I didn't know what you thought about that. I don't particularly have a problem with that, but some people have sensitive stomachs to vital wheat gluten. I actually made like a roast one time using that. And one of my daughter's friends was like, my stomach really hurts. <laughs> like, Are you sensitive to gluten? She's like, yeah, a lot. And I was like, well, dang. Um, so, you know, I guess if you have a sensitivity and again, it's not something I would probably do all the time, but you know, if you're going to want to make a ham for Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever, and you don't have a sensitivity, I think it's okay. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, Remy wants to know thoughts on leaving. Thank you for serving vegan meal, et cetera, cards. Oh yeah. That would be great. I think that people would really appreciate that. I mean, yeah. Um, I've, I have seen people do that before. Um, yeah, you know what? I've never done that, but I do always leave like a good review on open table. And I say that they accommodated me and I, um, actually try to post on my Instagram stories and tag them that they accommodated me and made me this beautiful meal. And then I, you know, try to leave a nice tip. And if I really didn't talk a lot about my purse food, but uh, this is another strategy that like, say I'm going out to eat, like there's a burger place here in Austin. It's called Phil's ice house. It's like a, you know, real casual place. My husband likes their veggie burgers. They come in the little red baskets. He gets a veggie burger and fries. I can't eat their ve veggie burger. It's, you know, cooked in oil. So I bring my own on my Ezekiel bun. I bring my own fries when nobody's looking. I tell them to get me an extra basket. I fling it out into the basket nobody ever notices. So I have my exact meal that looks like everybody else's and I'm just eating my purse food. Of course, I'm going to tip extra. Like I ate a big old meal there. So again, you just want to try to be as gracious and not a pain as you can be. Yeah. But I think leaving a thank you note would be great. Yeah. Um, I don't have any other questions. Does anyone else have any other questions? And also I always tell people this, if you think of a question later, because I'm the queen of, oh, I should have asked this, email me. I'll type in my email, at megan at pbnsg.org. Um, and then I will ask Lauren and get back to you, or you can email Lauren through her website, of course. Um, but if you think of something later today or tonight, tomorrow, um, or, want, or maybe you go on a trip next week and you have a question, oh, Od Odetta, Odetta? That's your name. You yeah, that's, it's me again. Yes, Hi. I'm new to... Um, plant-based I'm trying to go that route and um what about popcorn no popcorn I eat popcorn I have a popcorn popper um it's a pop light and it just uses hot air and I get the <clears throat> organic popcorn kernels from Whole Foods and I just put it in there and uh you know, again, it's not something I eat every day, but I absolutely love okay. popcorn and you can, you can either make it sweet or savory. Um, if you want it sweet, you could drizzle it with a little bit of maple syrup or date syrup. Um, and maybe, you know, a little bit like a, a little smidge of salt. I know that's not really, that's a little frowned upon, but you know, if that's something you want to do once in a huge while, um, I happen to like it savory. So I spritz it all up with um, Bragg's liquid aminos. Do you know what those are yet, Odetta? Yes. Um, so you can get it. It's like tamari sauce or soy sauce, but it's healthier. And some of it comes in a spritz bottle. Um, and so you spritz up your popcorn and then you can dust it with a little um, garlic powder and nutritional yeast and it's delicious. And there's tons of other ways you could do like. Yeah, that sounds good. Juice, yes, popcorn. thank you. Yeah, um, you normally, can... I was just wondering, you know, cause some people saying popcorn is just a, a filler or it's not, they don't recommend it. I just yeah. wanted to know your position on it. You know what? It's, it is just a filler and it's not something you want to eat every day, but I'm also the kind of person that lives in the real world. And sometimes I'm going to eat popcorn and sometimes I'm going to pull popcorn out of my purse at the movies, you know, in my container because everybody else is eating popcorn. You have to, you know, make it to where you can stick to this. And Absolutely. I'd rather you eat popcorn once in a while and just stick to this way of eating and feel like 
you know, you're satisfied, then never, then say, I can't ever eat that. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. I always tell people it's don't strive for perfection because then I don't think it's too hard to succeed and you want to enjoy life and enjoy what you're eating. That's kind of what I was saying about that pizza, you know, it's not not something I'm going to do every day, but if I'm on the road and I'm traveling, it makes for an easy meal. Yeah. And then another idea Joseph shared, which is true, you can sprinkle nutritional yeast on popcorn. Yeah. I like nutritional yeast on lots of different things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Every time you share, it's fantastic tips. I think, um, these are all little things that we could put in our back pocket. Um, cause we're always traveling, whether we're going to someone's house or the, you know, every day I'm always have food in my bag. Um, so it's important to always have something there in case you're in a situation where there's nothing that you can eat and you want to eat. So I, I always love this topic that you, you always focus on. I think it's a, helpful to everybody, no matter whether they're one year into this or 10 years into this or one day into this, it's always helpful. Um, and, um, Remy last, anyone feel the need to recruit others? Um, Lauren, do you want to answer that? Or I can share my opinion on that. Yeah, we can both share. I mean, I, I, I tried to lead by example. I really, nobody really wants you to tell them what to eat, but you know, for example, we had some family members who were sick and I did say, you know, I've reversed a disease by doing this. And if you want me to tell you what I did and you want me to help you, I would be more than happy to. But I don't feel like people, you know, want you preaching at them. But just the fact that I've been doing this for so long, I feel like so many people have come along with me just by, then they'll ask me because they, they've seen that I've gotten healthier and they see me always bringing my food and really sticking to things. Um, that's kind I mean, you can be gentle about it, but yeah. You know, what's your opinion, Megan? I agree. I don't, I don't usually talk about it unless someone asks about it. They see my son who's six, who never, never is sick. And all the other kids in this class are always sick. Uh, they see my endless amount of energy or, um, the fact that I never get sick or they just see how we eat and they inquire. So that's when I share, I wait till I'm masked, but I definitely don't bring it up myself and I don't push my lifestyle on anybody, but I definitely do open up a lot if they ask. Yeah. <laughs> they want to know, I will tell them Yeah, and help them. Yeah. Well, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren, for being here. Um, I love this event each, each month. So please tune in next month second Thursday of each month. So the next one would be the second Thursday of November. I can't believe we're already hitting November. Um, and please share this event with any friends. Um, it's free for anybody. And it gives you a taste of what we offer with our membership, which of course we have the specialized groups that I mentioned earlier. Lauren is our heart disease host. Every month she hosts a meeting, um, which has a focus on heart disease, but of course, you know, uh, recipes and different tricks. And then I said, we have eight other groups, um, all of which you'd have access to as a member. Um, and everything else that's on our website. So take time to plan our website if you haven't. Um, Email me if you have any questions. Um, And thank you, Lauren. I always appreciate you so much. Thank you to everybody. I appreciate everybody being here. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night.